All right, today I'm going to be demonstrating how to couple a laser in free space into an optical fiber. This consists of three steps, going from coarse to fine. The first step is to align your optical elements with the table. The second step is to align the incoming beam and a back propagating alignment beam at two locations. And the third step is to optimize the coupling using a technique called walking the beam. Now first off, I want to go over some of the equipment we're going to use for this procedure. The first piece of equipment I'd like to talk about is the coupler. This consists of a lens in the front whose position is adjustable and a port on the back that accepts an optical fiber. Previous to this demonstration, we adjust the position of this lens to correspond with our incoming laser beam, which is in the infrared. Next, I'd like to talk about the mirrors. To couple into a fiber, you need at least two degrees of freedom, which means you need two adjustable mirrors. These mirrors are roughly adjustable in the horizontal angle by rotation and also adjustable in the vertical position. On the back, these mirrors have fine adjustment knobs. The top knob adjusts the vertical angle and the bottom knob adjusts the horizontal angle. These mirrors can be clamped down to the table in virtually any position using these clamps. Obviously we're going to need a fiber to couple into and we're going to need a back propagating laser that's already coupled into a fiber. Now to make sure the height is approximately correct for all our optimal elements, we can use a ruler. And for walking the beam, we're going to need an optical power meter and a holder for the back end of the fiber. Now since we're working in the infrared and our eyes cannot view the infrared, we need an infrared viewing card to see the beam. Okay, now we're ready to begin the course alignment step. In this step, we can use the holes in the table to place our elements as square as possible. First off, we want to make sure that the fine adjustment knobs are near the center of the range. Now we can find the incoming beam. We can place the first mirror such that the beam hits the center of the mirror as close as possible. Now it looks like this one has to come up a little bit. That looks pretty good. Now I can lightly clamp it down. That way I can still move it but it's held in place a little bit. Now I can use the holes to place the second mirror. And I notice that this mirror center runs along with these holes, so I can place this mirror center also along these holes and lightly clamp it down. Now I can use a ruler to adjust the height of the second mirror. This one's just under four inches, so I'll place this one just under four inches also. Now I can use the holes to place the fiber coupler. So this center is about this in between both these holes, so I'm gonna place the fiber coupler center also in between these two holes. And the fiber coupler, fortunately, is around four inches also. And I can loosely tighten the fiber coupler down also. Now I can plug our fiber into the back of the fiber coupler. And that way, at the other end of the fiber, I can introduce a back propagating red beam. Now I have a back propagating red beam on one side and an incoming infrared beam on the other side. Now all I have to do is roughly adjust the mirror such that both beams hit the center of the mirror. You just follow it out and then turn the mirror. find the end coming infrared beam, it's way out here, so I can just follow it while I turn. All right, now I can check at two points, right in front of the fiber coupler, and both beams fit on the card there, and then at a point parallel to the fiber coupler, and both beams fit on the card here. So we're ready to tighten down. 
Make sure you hold the mirrors down when you tighten because sometimes these clamps can move them slightly. All right, one last final check. We're still there. We're also still there. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. We'll no longer need the screwdriver. So the goal of the second step is to overlap these two beams at two different locations. So we know that two points make up a line. And so if both beams are aligned at two points, that means they're collinear. The way to do this is to move, adjust the mirror further away from the point you're working with. So in this case, I'm going to adjust this mirror. And this will move the infrared beam. So I'm going to move the infrared beam until it overlaps with the red beam. All right, now I need to go to the other point and move the mirror further away. This will move the red beam, so I'm going to move the red beam to overlap with the infrared beam. So I need to go back to this point because adjusting this mirror slightly changes it. So now I need to move the infrared beam back onto the red beam. And just keep iterating this process until you get them as close as possible. Alright, so that looks pretty good. So now what we can do is check the back end of the fiber and see if we've coupled any of the light into it. As we can see, there's just barely coupling in, so now we're ready for the next part. Okay, now that we've just coupled into the fiber, I can take the back end of the fiber and place it on the holder. The first thing we need to do is figure out how much we can couple into this fiber. And to do that, we need to measure the power that's going into the lens. It looks like we're about 8.8 .8 milliwatts. A good rule of thumb is a minimum of 50% coupling. So that means we need to couple in at least 4.4 .4 milliwatts. So I place the head of the, the power meter at the end of the fiber to measure how much is actually being coupled in. The first step is to optimize each mirror independently. So I'm going to start with this one's horizontal knob and turn it clockwise. All right, so I'm lowering the power, so that means I'm going the wrong direction, so now I need to turn it counterclockwise. So it looks like our maximum is around 25 microwatts. Now I'll do the same with this one's vertical. So I'll turn it clockwise, which is raising the power, so I'm going the right direction. All right, now I'm going back down, so I need to back up a little bit because I passed the optimal point. So about 30 microwatts. Now I can do this mirror horizontal. So I'm going down, so I need to turn it the opposite direction. All right, so I reached about 90, or 95. And now find this one's vertical. I'm going the wrong direction, so now I have to turn it the other way. So it looks like I need to come back and our maximum is about 120 microwatts. All right, now I'm ready to walk the beam. Walking the beam consists of detuning one mirror and then compensating with the other mirror. So I'm gonna detune this one by turning the, the knob clockwise. And so I'll compensate with this one. First, I'm gonna try counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is actually lowering the power, so that means I probably should turn it clockwise. So it looks like we're not actually able to get back up to 120. So that means I started turning this one the wrong direction. So now I'm going to try turning this one, detuning it by turning it counterclockwise. And I'm going to compensate with this one by turning it counterclockwise. All right, so now we're up past our original point of 120. So that means we can continue to turn each one of these mirrors counterclockwise until we reach a maximum. Nope, looks like I reached the maximum, so I need to back up a little bit, so I passed it. So it's about one milliwatt, 1.1 milliwatts. Now I can do the same with the vertical adjustments. So I'm going to start by turning this one clockwise, which actually is raising it a little bit, but now I detuned it off that max. So I'm going to turn this one clockwise also and see what happens. 
So I'm lowering it, so that means I have to turn it counterclockwise. So now we're past our original point. We're at 1.7 milliwatts. That means I'm going the right direction. So that means I'll continue turning this one clockwise and this one counterclockwise. So it looks like we're at 5.4 milliwatts. And now we're going back down. So I went past the maximum, so now I need to back these both up a little bit. So we're at 5.6 milliwatts. Our minimum goal was 4.3 to 4.4 milliwatts. So we achieved our minimum goal. We can always continue tuning to get even more efficiency, but for our demonstration purposes, we are finished. All right, I hope you found this demonstration very informative and helpful. But before I go, I want to give you some thoughts I had through doing this many times. First is, the better you do the procedure and step you're on, the easier the next step will be. So if you align these well and square, it'll be easier to match the beams. And if you match the beams better, it'll be easier to walk the beams. Second, walking the beam can be very frustrating at first. But like riding a bicycle, if you just work on it, it'll become intuitive and you'll no longer need to think. And third, a good rule of thumb is to be able to couple at least 50% into the beam. Thank you for your time, and now it's time to drink some coffee.